Welcome to Cider Chat. It's part three of the series on cider media in America. And we're going to be speaking to the brothers who are the publishers behind the online blog and cider news called Cider Scene. Hello, my name is Rio Wincaller, and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast, where we speak with makers, cider enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. Our featured conversation with brothers Trevor and Nolan O'Malley of Cider Scene will be coming on a little bit later into this here episode. But before we get there, as I was producing and editing this here episode, I realized once it gets published, which will be on August 11th, 2021, then it's only 15 more episodes before I hit the number 300 episodes for Cider Chat. 300 episodes. Indeed, Rhea, almost as old as a peri pear tree. <laughs> That's so true, Perry. Uh, I didn't really think of it that way, but peri pears do grow for a very long time. And that's something to note, unlike apples, which uh, don't really last until like the 300 year range as, as we know it. <coughs> Want to say more, Rhea? I don't know, Mr. Quince. It's just, I'm just a little overwhelmed by the whole idea. And if you don't mind, it'd be nice to keep on talking it out as we count up to 300. Because like everyone who is doing work out in Ciderville, you have a lot of questions about yourself. Like, am I at the right place? Where do I go from here? You know, what does the future hold? And looking back, I just feel like it's a giant tidal wave coming at me and we're like on the crest just riding it. And man, it's just like absolutely wild ride. Well, of course, you're overwhelmed, Rhea. 300 years old is something to be quite proud of. Uh, uh, Perry, remember, it's a 300th episode we're counting up to. It, it doesn't mean that we're 300 years old. Right. right. I knew that. I was just making a joke. <laughs> that was a good one, Perry Pear. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Perry, did you also sign up with Mr. Quince for the Steve Martin Masterclass in Comedy? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> we need to move on, Rhea. Okay, now I know it's true. You, you, you've you, signed up. Does that mean that the Medlars have signed up too? Maybe yes, maybe no. Well, obviously it's working. You're going places, and that means a lot. So getting up to the 300th episode has definitely been helping you Hone your careers. I can download another application for you, Rhea. <coughs> not now, Barry. What do you mean? You, you think I'm not funny? I mean, I always get invited to all the parties at the Cider House. I, I thought we had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs together. I thought I was kind of like a, a barrel of fun. You are, Rhea. Maybe some new jokes, Rhea? N- new jokes. Uh, okay, okay. All right, I could take that. Mr. Quince, why don't we roll in a little bit of music and then cue to the Northwest Cider Club and their special cider box offering. Roger that. You gotta grab that luche. You gotta bust that thing. Get your kicks on the street. Gotta kick back, step back. Oh, you got to ski. It's a rat a tat a rat a tat a rat a tat a bala rat a tat a rat a tat a rat a tat a hala. I don't wanna be pushed like a dude the push When it comes to the cheddar, keep it under the cushion. I don't wanna be ganked like a dude the gank When it comes to the cake, be me you think I don't wanna be pushed like a dude the push When it comes to the cheddar, keep it under the cushion. I don't wanna be ganked like a dude the gank When it comes to the cake, be me. Emily Ritchie here from the Northwest Cider Club and the Northwest Cider Association. Did you know that Washington State alone produces over half the nation's apples? With a bounty like that, we can produce a wide range of cider styles. Subscribe to our club and get insider access to our Northwest Cider scene. We ship quarterly boxes to your door from up to 10 producers all in one box. This summer, we invite you to get curious about single varietal ciders and drink in the Pacific Northwest. In our current box, shipping soon, 
we've got a small batch single varietal cider featuring a famous French apple, the Muscadet de Dieppe. It's made by Christine Walter of Bauman Cider in the Willamette Valley of Oregon. Muscadet de Dieppe is a bittersweet cider apple from Normandy that's highly thought of among French cider fans. This apple was grown at Easy Orchards, a neighbor's of Bauman's. Known for being low in acid, high in tannins, the apples in this cider went through a long, cool, and wild ferment, allowing the fruit to come through with a sublime headiness. It's fermented dry with notes of caramel, dates, and figs. Bowden Farms was first homesteaded in 1895 by Elizabeth Bauman and her teenage sons, Stephen and Leo. In the early 1900s, Christine's great-grandpa Stephen began making cider in the barn for family and neighbors alike. Stop by Bauman's Farm and Garden for their produce, the bakery, the garden center, the petting zoo, and of course, cider. Become a core part of the cider community and connect with other cider enthusiasts from across the U.S. by joining the Northwest Cider Club. Sit back and let us do the picking so you can explore the Northwest. Order by August 18th to guarantee getting this box all about apples. Learn more at nwciderclub.com slash podcast. Well, let's see. I just so happen to have my laptop open in front of me. And uh, by the way, it's not because I'm downloading an application. I just want to make that perfectly clear because, you know. But we're both just on the page for the Steve Martin Masterclass, Rhea. <laughs> not now, Perry Pear. Right. Uh, Perry, actually, I put in nwciderclub.com forward slash podcast. And that brings you up to... Uh, a beautiful, beautiful page. And I went into the Explore tab, and it says Rare New Craft Ciders. And that's where the Discover Apple Varietals are. And it's a limited release box of six hand-picked ciders. And that's what Emily's been talking about. But they, they have so many options in this club. It's just, it, it makes me really thirsty. So think about it. You have to August 18th, which is really only a week away to get in on this. Remember, just go to nwciderclub.com forward slash podcast, and they bring you right to the Northwest Cider Association's Club and all these amazing offerings. Get your order in now for cider from the Northwest Cider Club before August 18th. And do know that there's a little tab that says gift, and it says give the gift of cider. Toast your friends, family, and coworkers from afar. Send them a box of cider. And help them drink in the Pacific Northwest. What's not to love about that? Once again, go to nwciderclub.com forward slash podcast. Up next is our featured conversation with Trevor and Nolan O'Malley of Cider Scene. And this is part three of a series that I've been rolling out on Ciders Media. And this is really specific to the U.S. audience, although their media does go worldwide because we're in a, a digital world at this point in time, of course. But the news that they're bringing out, for the most part, is really focused on news happening in the U.S. and I would say North America. So that's also inclusive of Canada, too. As a podcaster, I too am part of Ciders Media. So as such, I definitely have a good understanding of what it means to dedicate yourself to publishing every single week, writing posts, making sure that it's spot on, it's getting out and delivered to people, and that you are able to siphon through the news and be able to pinpoint it and direct your listeners, or in this case, their readers, to the best quality info out there. So we're going to head now to our featured conversation with Trevor and Nolan O'Malley, who are brothers who also happen to be identical twins, although they do not have identical voices. So that's really, really helpful. So I'm going to first introduce you to Trevor. Hey, everyone. It's Trevor from Cider Scene. I'm the co-owner here, and welcome to Cider Chat. And now, welcome Nolan O'Malley. Hey, everybody. This is Nolan O'Malley, the other co-owner of Cider Scene. Okay, there you have it. So Trevor has a little bit of a higher pitch than Nolan. And we first hear from Trevor telling us a little bit of their backstory. You know, Nolan and I run it. We're twin brothers. And uh, 
basically, uh, we'll go into the little history later when we talk about that, but uh, we don't really consider ourselves a publication, although we have a little bit of that piece to it. We're kind of a, a focused blog um, and then a little bit of a, a publication and a little bit of a marketing company to help cideries out across North America. So it's it's mostly a blog, but it's got other elements to it to kind of piece it together. Yeah, which is what has to happen now in order to make it work, uh, no doubt, uh, and to kind of fund all that. Can I ask, since you are twins, and it, I'm going to say that you're identical twins. We, we are. are. You are, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm appreciating the, you know, a little bit of facial hair there so I could tell the difference. <laughs> um, yeah, we try to do that, differentiate a little bit. I guess it's not my time to shave, but that's okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> since you mentioned it, I mean... I think it's really cool that, you know, here you are, two brothers and twins to, to boot. Uh, mm-hmm. Is this like your first kind of business venture in this way, or have you done this in the past? Um, I, well, let's see. Uh, it started all the way back to like probably doing lemonade stands and car washes together, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, we always kind of were scheming together, if you will, um, always just kind of work out a little little things as kids, but I, I would say this is kind of our first venture at, at really taking one of our many, many ideas we've had in the past and kind of bringing it into more of a, I guess, what you kind of consider a business. Um, we've made music together, <laughs> which we won't go into too, too much details about that, but I mean, we've always done something together, but this is kind of, I guess, the the, the culmination of all that work, and it's it's more of a true business uh, in the way that we think of it. And it's, it's our baby, and it was our way of kind of staying connected when I moved down for a job in Nashville, Tennessee, and, and Trevor stayed up here uh, in, in Illinois. So it's kind of a, a way that we can stay connected and, and communicate and, you know, find some joy in doing that on a day-to-day basis. Was Cider part of your family's history? No, it, it really wasn't. Nolan was the precipice to all this. He kind of started us on the Cider Path. So I'll let him tell a little bit about the story and then I'll tell my side of it as well. Yeah, I would say our, our family, if you want to go into that, that, what do they drink? It was more so beer and and like hard liquor. So I would not say cider was even, you know, competing on that spectrum. But, you know, for, for me, uh, I was dating a girl in college and she went overseas and she tried a bunch of cider. She came back. She had me try uh, a cider for the first time. And I'm trying to remember, it was... Um, it was not my favorite. It was strong bow. It was not my favorite. I can't remember which flavor it was, but I was not necessarily like, Oh, that is my, my favorite thing. It took me forever to drink it. I don't know why it's really not that hard to palate, but it just took me a while to drink it either way. I was like, okay, I'll, I tried that, but let's try some other stuff. And in college, the only other things you can really try were at that time, especially was like woodchucks and angry orchard. And I really clung to woodchucks for some reason. I would drink that pretty much anytime I was drinking, it was woodchucks. So uh, just kind of going through years of drinking that, they had a competition when they had their new gumption series at that point. It was their new uh, cider line. And when they did that, they had a, a competition to like show your gumption. So essentially you show something you're passionate about. And if you did so and you did it well enough, you'd get a trip to Vermont. So Trevor and I are like, we really want to do this, but Trevor wants to bring his his girlfriend at the time, not his wife. <laughs> and then I want to bring, you know, like, I want to go too. So, you know, Trevor and I can't do a video. Uh, we have to kind of do one together. So we got our other buddy to do a gumption video as well. So our one buddy's a little bit of a woodworker. So we helped him do his video. Uh, Trevor and I did some cooking with cider, uh, which we, you know, we've always done. Even if Trevor wasn't a huge cider drinker, we were cooking with it. Um, so we both made our videos, we both submitted it and we all, all four of us got a trip to, to Vermont, uh, for their, their, um, what's the name of it? Chuck cider stock, right? C- cider stock. Yeah. So they stopped doing that recently, but, uh, that was the, uh, that was the beginning. And, yeah. and then basically from there we had, we drank a lot of cider from there, had a huge headache <laughs> from all headache. the sugar. Uh, and we're not, I'm not hating on, on sugary ciders because we liked it back then but of course your palate changes and uh then we were going to brunch the day before we left and we tried citizen cider because someone mentioned to us that and that kind of took us down a a really nice path and uh i mean the rest is history right so we came back nolan's got to move for a job to nashville and we say hey let's do something together and nolan has a little bit of a history of building websites of course Mm -hmm. music and creative types things of that nature and we said okay let's start a, a blog 
And we're, we're talking about beer. We said way too diluted. We looked at cider. We said, hey, we love cider. Let's do it. And, so it's uh, an open market and, and we can yep. kind of bring our, our own perspective to it, which, I mean, it, it kind of all rolls into our mission. It's like beer is as a prominence and everyone knows about all these beers and they get all the shelf space. But what if we can do something where we know that there's some really good, rich history to cider and these cider makers. I mean, we know people in the Midwest that own these orchards and, you know, just singing their praises. And I know that there are people that I have, you know, family friends or friends that make cider and it's, there's just something so nice about it and so natural. And it just feels like a, a rich history that we wanted to delve into a little bit more. Of course, beer has that, but just singing the praises of cider and, you know, uh, trying to make it a little bit more prevalent in, in the U S you know, that was really our goal. I love your backstory on the fact that you won a cider trip. I mean, I didn't know exactly. that. And, and all the Vermonters <laughs> listening right now, which is a you know a, a growing force. There's more and more Vermont, sure. Vermont cideries. A lot of pride hearing that, no doubt. And of course, being a New Englander, I'm really oh, yeah. happy that you know you came to this side of the country. Not not to take away anything that's happening in all the other uh, little spots, special spots sure? of Ciderville, no doubt. But wow, that is so cool. And yeah, I, citizens, it was the it was the precipice, really. It, very good. So champagne like to me and crisp and light. I I just I had to have more of it in Chicago. Luckily there was enough in the market. So really, yep. really pleased with all that. Yeah, that's that's something because that whole little trifecta area where you went for the cider stock is, you mm-hmm. know, there's also Champlain Orchards and Shaxbury and a yep. number of cideries kicking up there. So how, how cool is yep. that? I love it. Right on. Beautiful and, up there too, of course. Yeah, Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gorgeous. yeah, gorgeous. That was, uh, that was also the thing we noted. We're like, okay, well, if we're drinking cider and we had this view, you know, now it's stuck in my brain, like oh, cider and, and beauty and yeah. experience. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and also, I think it's right on that whole piece of the the story of, of uh, cider right now, though it, it's still in the making and it's not saturated, as you said, which really provides entrepreneurs like yourself or myself and, and uh, mm-hmm. a small collection of us a, a great opportunity to help uh, provide that narrative. So Absolutely. Here, here you are, you set it up. Uh, I think you started, um, well, we'll let me have you tell that story. When, when did you actually launch Cider Scene? Yeah, Trev. Yeah, so it started in uh, 2016. So again, Nolan Nolan just was uh, living with me and, and then was moving to Nashville around, uh, I guess it was l- late 2015 is when you knew. Correct. And yeah. then 2016, so we had to build the website, get everything started. Um, so we officially launched in 2016 with our website. And then, of course, our Instagram you know, followed be- uh, behind that a little bit, which it's kind of our getting our legs, understanding a little bit more about the brands and mm-hmm. and getting more knowledge for ourselves while we were, you know, searching online, learning a lot more and trying to become a little bit more knowledgeable, not just the average uh, blogger. And uh, yeah. obviously, since we've had the years now, uh, we've learned quite a bit. But 2016 was really the uh, was the start of it. And, and working, uh, I work professionally in like digital marketing, SEO, uh, search engine optimization, which is just building a presence on the internet. Um, I'm taking a lot of that knowledge and, and tr- we're trying to write content. It's kind of a part of our mission, but write content that can bring in wine drinkers and beer drinkers and literally the searches that they're kind of making that kind of sit on that fringe of, are they accessible to cider or are they thinking about beer or are they looking for something like hop ciders as an example? If we're covering that topic properly, we may be able to get some beer drinkers and some wine drinkers to at least go to the liquor store and kind of evaluate that there's some other options there or, you know, at least try it when they're at a party or something like that. So, so that would lead me to the next question, which is who's your target audience and maybe who, who do you want your audience to be? Yeah, I think that kind of ties into our our mission. We like tasked ourselves at the beginning to spread knowledge for the average drinker, and that's really what we consider ourselves average drinkers. So that includes uh, beer drinkers and people who are more curious. Uh, obviously, people who drink kombucha, mead, and that type of stuff. That's a little bit uh, another niche market. Yeah, uh, th- those are definitely a yeah, fringe market, as Nolan calls it. That's definitely our market. Um, of course, we do have some content for wine and enth- or cider enthusiasts. And, uh, you know, some cider making tips and that type of stuff. But really, the average drinker is kind of what we fit in. And we think that fits in the space as well, is there's a couple different elements of uh, people in the business. And that's kind of our sweet spot, I guess you could say, is, yeah. is really the average drinker. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, dragging people in with different articles that uh, that maybe they don't know about what cider is, period, or 
they go, oh, I do like cider, but I only like this. And I wonder why I liked it. And we could kind of draw them in that way. Yeah. And I think that's the way we can be authentic. I don't think we're going to pretend like we um, have gone through all the ranks to be able to describe cider or talk to the cider making process like we're experts. I mean, we've learned a ton and we can express that, but we like to kind of speak to the people that that can help grow this industry. And those are people that like Trevor. Trevor drinks cider and beer a lot. Like he, he gets a good split. I'm a little bit more into the cider world, but you know, if we can get somebody like Trevor to start drinking cider a little bit more, or, or some of our buddies who never really tried it, they like it now. They just didn't know. So we got to find a way to speak to them. And I think we can do that with our website and, you know, Instagram and our social presence a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And you feel like, and you feel like you achieved something when you go to your friend's house who never drank cider or knew what it was. And you open up his fridge when we go to his house, <laughs> he's got a whole shelf of cider. And I go, look at that. You know, we made it. <laughs> We did it. We did it. That is a victory, no doubt. That's super cool. So you have that audience, and and uh, you're not really necessarily going for the commercial cider makers. Is that true? That's true. We, we we'd say average drinker, but of course, uh, you know, cider's so regional, hyper regional right now. I'd say mm-hmm. so. We're we're trying to find, you know, uh, we kind of split everything into regions, and then try to have. Uh, different uh, target markets in the, in those regions. So like the average drinker maybe in the East coast is a little bit different of an article than in the West coast and North and South and however that might be. So Mm -hmm. uh, we obviously have, you know, some commercial articles where we push that type of stuff, but we really focus on the, uh, the craft scene. So uh, we want to help grow a cider who just started, help them out, leverage them, get their name out there and have people curious and try it. And of course, brands that are aged in, we try to help them as well. Of course, we want to start out small, and then commercial will, of course, talk about some interesting things, but the focus is mostly craft. Yeah, I think our approach with different people that we work with, or at least um, like presenting that information, I mean, they all take different, we take different approaches with with who they are and how we kind of present them. So, I mean, it, it is even from the way we write it to when we work with certain brands, I we approach it, you know, differently every time because we're trying to give them as much leverage as possible. May it be with people that already like cider scene or already like that cidery or are in the industry or like cider already, but we also, what can we do to kind of expand that a little bit and and get people outside? Um, So it could be a big cider maker, a small cider maker, you know, that's, we we think individually on on those articles and pieces that we work on. When you say regionally, are, do you consider yourself uh, North America? We, we do. So we, we mostly focus on the U.S. Um, and we have kind of small content writers across the United States and Noel and I do most of the bulk of the work. But uh, uh, we also have a, a rep up in Canada. So we do reviews and stuff through her. And her name is Taz, a uh, girl with the cider review on on their, her socials. And uh, she kind of helps us out and doing articles and stuff from there because there obviously is a, a whole nother interesting area <laughs> yeah. of cider there. And she's so close uh, to us that we kind of do that. But we, we're not really expanding beyond North America and we never will because it's just it's such a big thing to <laughs> to take on. And you know, obviously <laughs> the Midwest is so dense and we focus on that mostly. And then we kind of emanate out across the United States. So uh, if we had a ton more people or a lot more time, uh, yeah, yeah, we'd expand probably further than that. But North America is how we define it. Yeah, and I, I think in our, our plans of, of growth too, I, it's just providing more and more content. I think right now we publish, you know, generally Tuesdays and Thursdays is kind of our goal. Um, maybe sprinkling in uh, a Wednesday or a Friday or a Saturday here and there. But I mean, ultimately our goal is to publish more content. So if we can get two to three articles every week or start consistently getting to that three mark, um, then I think we can probably cover the U.S. a little bit better, but I mean, there's so much to cover. You know, even even that's a daunting task at times. Is there some difficulties that you find in covering cider at this point in the game? And you know, because I, I I hear that you have other interests too. And of course, mm-hmm. I write about craft beer and have been in the sure. drinks yeah. category, <laughs> you know, all over the map too myself. But Absolutely. is there something about cider? And I don't, I'm not trying to look at the negative, but something that makes it a little bit more of a its own entity that's of its uniqueness. Internal dialogue that cider makers have to have. I think it's not a difficulty I have to address on a day-to-day basis, but I can understand that internal struggle. It's like these classic, fantastic products with the best apples you can get in this region versus like a heritage cider versus do I make a hop cider with all these adjuncts to it? You know, 
I think I, I think I think about that a lot. And it's like, how can we help these people with their particular uh, take on the industry? Work with those national organizations or the organizations that are pushing cider. And we all have to have that same collective message. Understand what's a sweet cider and what's not a sweet cider. <laughs> And, and that needs to get pushed all the way through. Like cider can be dry. And I think a lot of people just don't know that. <laughs> From cider scene's perspective, does it matter to you? Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess that it doesn't, that, you know, there's like habanero cider to the dry cider. And do you think that media should pick one side or the other on that? Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's good because diversity is key, and the way the market is now and how humans are kind of structured, especially in the age groups of 21 to say, you know, up from there, uh, we like diversity. You know, that's why there's so many options of things we watch, things we do. So, uh, if we were really pigeonholing ourselves and just saying sing, single varietals, which uh, again we love these now, we're, mm -hmm. they're fantastic, and we it took the, us time to learn why they're fantastic. Um, I think without the diversity, it kind of it, it pigeonholes you. So I would say, yes, that's a good thing, but I do see that there is a negative that kind of hurts these, you know, these premier makers who are making this amazing product that you get in a bottle and someone might look at it and think, oh, that price point's too high, but they don't really realize everything that goes into it. But I think, again, it's an education piece and, and kind of pushing that cider can be like wine. So again, that's my, more of like a, uh, an education that we just as a whole need to, to get. Yeah. Through. And I think what might actually help too, and this is, I mean, this goes deep into the weeds, but cider could be in different shelf spaces, right? Like if you're going to make beer that follows all the trends, then cider can sit on that shelf. But if you have these beautiful simple varietal ciders, they should be by the wine. They should be by something where somebody has a little bit more money in their pocket. They know they're going to spend between, I don't know, 15 and $20 on a bottle, let's say. And then they're looking at wine and then they're like, okay, this this is all the same. Like this feels like wine. This looks like wine. The design looks like wine. You're fitting the mold. And I hate to say that you have to fit the mold, but you can separate your shelf spaces, but also fit some of the mold for what that person's kind of anticipating. And certainly yes. wine has wine coolers and we know the difference, right? You know the difference mm -hmm. between a little box wine versus a box. And people know when they want to consume what, right? We've already compartmentalized our experiences, and cider hasn't been able to do that just yet. Is there something mm -hmm. that you uh, recommend that they do on their websites? Besides SEO and all that, because I, know, well, I, I think, and I think having, that's really key, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, info, I mean, education. Yeah, yeah. Um, Again, I think this all, I wasn't thinking about this before, but I think it all kind of boils down to everyone needs to have that united front. So I think information on everyone's website should be able to speak insider, speak some kind of the same message. So people don't really know the scale of flavors out there, or like, not the scale of flavors, like the scale of sweetness. They don't really understand that. And they don't also understand how, what kind of wealth of options there are out there. So if everyone can kind of, express that i think a lot of there's some cider websites that do a great job of that where they kind of talk about dry or sweet um what what it's good for what it compares to if you can really clearly label that and have a very organized website that they can clearly go to ciders and see a list and they can go like they could select sweet or dry and be like man every time i go to a cider website or on their socials, I can see clearly that there's a scale that I'm not even aware of. If that is a part of your message at all times, now it's becoming part of that conversation. So they'll be like, yeah, on this, like, look at these ciders. So this one's really dry and now it's stuck in their head. And when they go to the liquor store or something with their friends, they're like, yeah, this one's really dry. And it's dry and that cider are now synonymous with one another. Providing them that scale of sweetness and understanding the flavors, um, really what it compares to and why it would fit their palate. So clearly on the labels, clearly on the website, as clearly as possible to, to, to dissect where it, where it fits. Also having it like a blog component on their website or on their socials, having communication with their fans, anything like that just brings a little bit of a stronger, tight-knit relationship. If Cider, if you can have that personal connection, either on socials or in a blog, just kind of like discussing a topic, you have a little bit more of that personal relationship. And then I'm more of an ambassador of your brand than I was before. If writers want to get involved with you. Yeah, so, so either our, our, our uh, website, uh, we have forms on there, our email, which is team at ciderscene.com or, or our socials. If you reach out to us, 
we will answer you guys and <laughs> usually uh, very quickly. And uh, we usually start that conversation off getting to know them a little bit, um, why they want to write, what their experience is. And uh, it doesn't necessarily, you know, we have a couple of writers that have had no experience insider other than they like it. And we kind of uh, like their perspective too. So, uh, it, it, you know, experience, I wouldn't say doesn't matter, but it, it doesn't necessarily matter in the scheme of what we're looking for. We do like to have all different perspectives too. Cause I do think that brings value because sometimes now we're going to be pigeonholed on looking at from, from this level and so this level or whatever it may be. So uh, that that's the easiest way get a hold of us. We'll have a conversation and uh, see if we can, we can make it work, make it fit. Fantastic. Yep. Well, you guys bring a lot to the table for all of us out there in the world of cider and certainly for all the folks in North America too, who are avid readers of your bi-weekly and maybe tri-weekly who knows <laughs> Hopefully, yeah cider scene <laughs> lots of great tips and info from trevor and nolan o'malley of cider scene i liked how they were really talking about uniformity in the language which is one of the heartbreaks of cider right now um this this podcast is called Cider Chat. They're calling their blog post Cider Scene. We have Cider Craft Magazine. We have Cider Culture. These are all the media folks. And in the U.S. specifically, we have Hard Cider. So talk about making it tough for the consumers of cider, the cider fans themselves, when you're calling one thing Hard Cider and Cider, you smell it with a Y, you spell it with an I. Oh my goodness. It's amazing that we've gotten this far. So I guess we should just keep on looking at it like that. And a great point about, you know, the shelf space. Uh, Already we see in package stores, that's what we call it here in uh, New England and Massachusetts is uh, the liquor store, right? Where you have wine and beer and spirits all being sold in the same place. Well, you'll see like the mass produced beer on one side of uh, the store that I go to. And then on the other is all the craft beer. And then you have like the ice wine or ice cider in one section from California or, you know, we were already separating stuff. So it, it, it works that way. I think it does. I did ask them for two recommendations of websites that they felt really covered the bases in terms of info for the consumers. And they mentioned Seattle Cider Company and Austin East Ciders. So if you're currently a commercial maker or you're looking to create a website for a new cidery that you're starting up, those are two good tips to look at, both Seattle Cider Company and Austin East Cider. Check out their websites. Now, those two cideries are much different than an orchard-based cidery. So Trevor and Nolan say if you are orchard-based, you know, where you have your tasting room on site and the orchard right outside the windows, let people know what that looks like so they'll have an idea arriving. Showcase your website with photos. They have a lot of tips there. There's a little bit more extra audio, and that is actually going to be going up to the Cider Chat Patreon page. And if you haven't yet become a patron, well, this is a great time, especially as I'm swinging up to the 300th episode here. It would be awesome to celebrate that benchmark with you as we look forward into Season 7. And by the way, at Patreon, there is a certain level for the folks who can do this for commercial cider makers. And so as such, I'd like to give a tip of the glass to Taddy Bogle Cider Works in Acme, Pennsylvania. Taddy Bogle is going to have an upcoming episode here. And actually, I put a little... <laughs> I think there's like two little TikToks now at Cider Chat on TikTok about Teddy Bogle. And one is probably something uh, I don't think Kurt Henry, who's the cider maker there, ever talks about. But a UFO landed in the field there. Right? Okay. I'll just just put that on pause. Um, anywho, you want to check that out, you follow Cider Chat on TikTok and, and see that little video. And also Esoterra Cider Works. Esoterra is based out in Dolores, Colorado, and they won a ton of medals recently at Glencap. I am so stoked for you guys. Woohoo! Oh, and by the way, just going backwards to Taddy Bogle, that was way before the cidery was there, but it's a really cool story. So you do want to check that out. Uh, Moving forward, I want to thank the folks at Duck Chicken Cider. They are based in London. That's James and Colleen. Uh, I just adore them. And they make really great cider and perry. They're big fans of perry and they like to drink it in pints. 
what's not to love about that, okay? Also, we have Space Time Mead and Cider Works in Dunmore, Pennsylvania. Uh, there's actually a, a TikTok with uh, Space Time Mead and Cider Works. That was fun. There's a whole bunch of TikToks up right now uh, from my little cider tour. I keep on rolling them out. And Dan there is a really nice guy and uh, just makes some delicious products. So you want to support them if you're passing through that area of Pennsylvania. That's Eastern Pennsylvania. Insider Japan is Japan's first and only bilingual magazine dedicated to all things cider. And it's a wonderful magazine. It's Cider Media good thing to support so we keep cider in the news check that out there's a link at the cider going up campaign page at ciderchat.com and also ross on y cider and perry company located in the lovely town of ross on y in herefordshire and what can i say about the johnson family they are just heroes for so many and certainly for me and the amount of cider that they're producing there and they also have john the cider maker Oh my goodness, it just top-notch people. If you're in here for sure, you want to stop at the U Tree Pub, which is on the front side of the cidery. You got to kind of walk through all the orchards to get back there. And that area is not necessarily open to the public, but the U Tree Pub is, and it is outstanding. I, I hung out there when I was at the Ross Cider Fest, which seems like a long time ago. <laughs> I miss it so much. Oh my goodness. Oh, please, people, we got to be safe out there. Anyway, Anyways, these are awesome folks, and there's more patrons, too, who are part of helping keep Cider Chat online and rolling it out to you. And again, if you find value, please join, become a patron. And if that language doesn't work for you, well, consider it tipping your podcaster like one would when you go to your favorite cider tasting room or cider bar or bar or or any kind of service. Um, This is kind of a service for Ciderville uh, around the world. And of course, all cider media is. So I want to just bring it back to that. I want to really thank, of course, today's guests, both Trevor and Nolan O'Malley of Cider Scene. You could check them out at ciderscene.com. And then earlier in this series, we had last week, Kristen Ackerman Bacon of Cidercraft Magazine. Check that out at cidercraftmag.com. And then Mary Bingham and Emily Kovich of Cider Culture. Check that out at ciderculture.com. These are all part of the cider media we have happening here, you know, kind of new players to the game of media, but doing such a wonderful job for cider. And really, where would we be if we didn't have good folks learning how to write about it, publishing it? You know, everybody's just doing their best for the joy of cider. And unlike cider makers, their product or our product is that language, that that word to get it out and to help educate people. And so it's been a really honor for me to be able to speak to my colleagues in the cider media world and bring this mini series to you. Well, there's a lot more cider chat to come. Make sure, if you haven't yet, do follow or subscribe to this here podcast. Spread the word. Tell people who like cider. Hey, do you know that there's a cider podcast? It's really worth checking it out. Uh, You can find lots of good tips. I mean, recently somebody just asked on the Hard Cider Appreciation page about the Finger Lakes area. And I had a whole list. I guess there's like 12, something like that, episodes that we did on the Finger Lakes. So there's a lot of good resources on the podcast. And so please share it to folks who otherwise wouldn't know about that. Because that's how Cider All started, certainly here in the U.S., is just by word of mouth. And now we are connected all worldwide. Such a great feeling, isn't it? All right, Ciderville. With that, I'm going to leave you here. This is Real Wind Caller signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. We like cider. We like palms. We love orchards. And having fun, there is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. 
excited. We like palms. We like orchards. Having some fun. There is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we do it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason why we drink it like this. Oh yes, there is. There is a reason. We like walking through the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. Oh yeah. We, we like cider. Oh yes, we do. We like palms. Oh yes, we do. We love orchards, having some fun. There is a reason. There is a reason why we do it like this. There is a reason why we do it like this. There is a reason why we drink it like this. We like walking down the orchards, dancing in the streets, smelling all the blossoms, kicking up our feet. Oh yeah. We like cider. We like palms. Oh yes, we do. We like orchards, having some fun.